I V M. I have so many credit cards at this point that it can get quite confusing to remember all the numbers and pins and what have you. Luckily, I don't have to remember them anymore because Cred does that for me. On Cred, you can make seamless payments, manage multiple spends and recurring expenses all in one app. Plus, the app also tells you which credit card of yours to use so that you can earn maximum benefits. It's almost like Cred is my personal financial guardian. So, don't miss out. Just download the Cred app now. Folks, welcome to Paisa Paisa brought to you by Credit, the most rewarding credit card bill payments app. I'm your host Anupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter and today we're going to talk about investing in entrepreneurs. My guest is Ratna Mehta, Executive Vice President and Head Vadwani Catalyst Fund. Really excited because A, we don't get foundations too often, two, we don't get Catalyst Funds too often on Paisa Paisa and three, always great to have a woman and her perspective on a lot of things on Paisa Paisa, you don't get too many of them. So Ratna, welcome to Paisa Paisa. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. Thank you so much, Anupam. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for the really kind words. Uh, what you. really stuck with me is that you said that you don't get foundations very often. But what I've seen being a part of the foundation is the role of the foundation is changing so much. They really work uh, now with corporates, with governments. Collaboration is the key over here and that's why I'm glad to be on the show. Sounds good. So let's start with an introduction. A lot of our listeners might not know about Radhwani Foundation and the Catalyst Fund is the first time, like I said, we've had both. So please tell us about Vadwani Foundation and about the Catalyst Fund. What are they about? Sure, sure. So Vadwani Foundation is the vision of Dr. Romesh Vadwani. Dr. Vadwani has been a tech and a private equity entrepreneur. And he's promoted multiple ventures uh, in his long career. But one thing that he's really passionate about is impacting lives. And we think that the best way to impact lives is to back entrepreneurs who in turn are supporting livelihoods. And that's what the Vadwani Foundation does across emerging markets, India, Southeast Asia, Latam, and Africa. Now, coming to Catalyst, Catalyst Fund is an extension of the vision of the foundation. So what we do in the Catalyst Fund is back entrepreneurs who in turn are creating large-scale jobs. So this could be any sector. We are sector agnostic. It could be healthcare. It could be logistics. It could be social e-commerce. But where, by virtue of the growth of those businesses, they are creating opportunities for a large scale of people. That's what we want to back. And we are instrument agnostic. So we could do for-profit companies as well as we could do non-profit platforms who are doing programs to enable our vision. Okay, understood. So let's start this um, with a very generic question because you've had the opportunity to assess and invest in entrepreneurs so you know what it takes. So if I, you know, it's a pretty simple and straightforward question. What are the specific qualities that you look when a proposal or a pitch comes to you? I, I, and I ask this because a lot of our listeners probably are you know, entrepreneurs looking out for uh, investors. So what are the few specific qualities that you, that you look for as a fund when a proposal or a pitch comes to you? Absolutely. I think the entrepreneur is the heart and the mind of the business. And the most important person around which the entire business rests. So when we look at entrepreneurs, I think the most important thing, the first thing that we look for is what is his background, whether it is his educational background or his professional background. Right? Generally, we would prefer entrepreneurs who are setting up businesses have some experience in the field in which they are. Either they work somewhere, they've done a small venture earlier in that, or they have some ecosystem supporting them. For example, either family, etc. The second thing, which is most important that we look for in our entrepreneurs is the key team, right? Do the guys know each other? Have they worked before? It's very important that, you know, the interpersonal relationships are well-oiled because the business rests on people. People can make or break things in companies, right? And therefore, that bonding between them, the strength of that bond is very important. The the normal thing what entrepreneurs, uh, you know, think is that overnight, everybody wants to become successful. We see unicorns cropping up uh, in news every other day. But I would tell to all our listeners, and especially the entrepreneurs, one thing which has stuck me for the longest time is, in India at least, and 
entrepreneur is made overnight in 10 years <laughs> what it really means anupam is that you know normally when we see very solid businesses those businesses have been built over time they may become very popular in the last 2 years and the last 3 years but essentially it requires a lot of perseverance so perfect perseverance and the desire to you know never say die attitude in the sense because entrepreneurs are going to meet a lot of failures before they see success and the whole ideal thing for them is to say that if not this this that the ability to adapt is very important for us so i think these are some of the key things that we look at in entrepreneurs in terms of flexibility in terms of having a listening ear i think the last thing that i do look for in entrepreneurs is a listening ear and most investors when they meet a bunch of you know entrepreneurs in a weekly basis it's very important the elevator pitch is very important in terms of what you're doing how you're doing it differently and you know what's your vision so that yeah. is something key that we look for in our entrepreneurs very interesting the overnight success that took 10 years that was 10 years in the making very important okay um scale so scale is one of the things that comes up often in a lot of conversations um a lot of funds lot of entrepreneurs you know entrepreneurs believe that scaling up in india is difficult investors believe that finding an entrepreneur who can actually scale is difficult so both so in your opinion what are the specific problems you know when of scaling up business models and i believe that you've got experience across emerging markets also so if you could give us perspective on both on india in particular as well as em- the emerging markets in general scaling up business model right in real estate uh, they say it's all about location 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 when it comes to an entrepreneur it's primarily about execution 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 you know we always say that you know a vision without execution is hallucination so i think raise a sharp focus on execution especially in india is very very important you know running your company like a pmo figuring out who are going to be the legs and hands of your business who are going to enable to do things Right? because as an entrepreneur the most important role is the strategy is the vision is being ability to guide people but i think execution is very important because a lot of businesses which have started off very well can go wrong in the execution the second important thing which i've seen a lot of businesses uh, go haywire with is the customer understanding this become so passionate about their product about their company that they end up launching products and services without actually taking a buy in from the customer and therefore whenever we used to look at businesses the first thing that we ask is you know have you done a customer survey you know what are the customers saying about the product or you know who is the competition what is running well what is not running well so understanding of the customer is one very 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 important thing when it comes to scaling businesses third i think this is a no brainer probably every entrepreneur knows that when he starts off people is getting the right people the right combination the right hierarchy keeping them motivated is like the best thing that can happen to your business right because uh, some of the greatest businesses are built by people who have stayed there for long the more churn that you see in a business the that much more time it takes to scale a business right so it's very important that you're able to retain the right team i think india execution is very very important in emerging markets you know the markets are slightly more matured in that sense right mm. over there what is important for businesses to scale at this stage is innovation innovation undoubtedly in india is also very important but a lot of time trends take a couple of years to steep into india and you know a lot of opportunities kind of crop out of it saying that this is really working well and why don't we try that in india like telemedicine in the us started getting very popular much before it hit india as a wave and now uh, because of the pandemic we realize that it is doable it is acceptable and the awareness is increased that much more but when you come to the you know emerging markets in singapore taiwan hong kong etc you really need a business idea which is different which can stand apart especially at an early stage you know and then it is about uh, of course execution because execution is very important whichever economy or whichever stage 
you are in. Okay. So, uh, so sorry, go on, please. Yeah, apart from that, it's, it's again the people, right? In emerging markets, uh, it's that much more difficult to get the right people. In India, I think there is a whole wave of, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to work with startups. A lot of people uh, from corporate lives are moving on to doing that. A lot of kids who are graduating are like really gung ho about joining startups. So that much more easier it makes to get the right mindset into the company. Okay. Now, you, you, this is the last question before we go into a break since, you know, since Badwani Foundation, since it's a foundation, there is also a focus on accelerating economic development and the way to do that is creating livelihoods and jobs for people because that's how um, I'm guessing an economy also progresses. That's how development happens. So in your opinion, which sectors or which businesses in specific have that capability, the capability to accelerate economic development by creating livelihoods and jobs? India has always been the IT hub of the world, right? We've seen a wave of the IT, ITS, BPOs really prosper. Now, with there being a step change in terms of what technologies are really working, like AI, ML, data handling, labeling, data analytics has become very, very important. And India has a very strong base of engineers. So there are a lot of businesses which are setting up, you know, centers in India catering to Indian clients, to global clients. And a lot of them are doing this in tier two, tier three cities. So these businesses are growing very well and at the same time have the potential to create a lot of employment uh, within the spaces in India which really requires it. So I think these businesses have excellent scope. We've been seeing a lot of businesses in this space uh, cropping up right now. Some of them have like really scaled well as well. The other thing uh, which is kind of, you know, really growing right now is the social e-commerce space and the logistics space together. Because e-commerce in India, Amazon, Flipkart have pretty much started off with the metros. But slowly you realize that India stays beyond the 10 top 10 cities as well. And if you have to reach the people over there, it is important to have some kind of a personal connect. And this personal connect enables these businesses to create local entrepreneurs. So wherever you want to create a hub for social e-commerce, you're having your own people over there from those locations which are doing BD, demand curation, et cetera, for you. So those businesses have good scope. The other thing is, uh, I'll be preaching the choir of saying this, but healthcare. Healthcare, we realize because of the current situation, there are a lot of fissures that need to be fixed, uh, whether it's creating a whole telemedicine network or, you know, improving the network of diagnostic centers or building a base of home healthcare, which eventually India will require because the trend has been moving healthcare out of hospitals to your homes to closer to home. And this can create, uh, you know, very significant employment opportunities for allied health workers. So this is another space which we think can, which has a huge uh, job creation potential. Fantastic. So folks, we're going to take a break right here, right now. On the other side, we're going to talk about specifics, right? Um, the work that Badwani Catalyst Fund does, case studies, a lot of, you know, a lot of ways to understand the kind of value that Vadwani Catalyst Fund creates for the businesses that they invest in. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the Investing in Entrepreneur Special. My guest, Ratna Mehta, Executive Vice President of Vadwani Catalyst Fund. And on that note, time to take the credit convenience break. We'll be right back on the other side. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. If you are not following us on social media, please do. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'd like to thank the sponsors on the network this week. Thank you so much to Cred, Siet, and Global Victoria. Without you guys, this stream would not be possible. So, on the note, Maru Kinayat gives us an overview of the potential Twitter ban in India. On this round is on me. Gauri Devi Deyal was joined by actor-producer Purna Jagannathan to talk about her career in Bollywood, Hollywood, and theater. She talks about the upcoming season of the show, Never Have I Ever. On Cyrus Says, we had legendary musician Usha Uttok. She took us through her journey and shared her experiences as the unconventional musician. 
In the second installment of the Father's Day special on Akla Station, adulthood, Ayushi has a candid conversation with her father, Siddhartha Meen. On the Global Victoria Tech Talks podcast, we showcase some compelling new tech stories coming out of Melbourne. Whether it's from the buzzing gaming industry or the robust edtech sector, Victoria is increasingly becoming a hub of emerging technology. And we talk to some thought leaders and industry legends about the same. Catch all the action from the World Test Championship on the Edges and Sledges podcast. For our Hindi listeners, we have Kail Niti, which goes live on YouTube every morning. And with that, let's get you back to your show. And welcome back to the Investing in Entrepreneurs special. My guest, Ratna Mehta, Executive Vice President of Badwani Catalyst Fund. On the first side of this episode, we spoke about the qualities of entrepreneurs, problems in scaling up, and which sectors can actually create jobs in India, which business. We spoke in detail about all those three topics. In this final part of this episode, we're going to talk about specific examples. So, Ratna, let's get right to it. Okay, let's get into the work of Badwani Foundation. How exactly do you help entrepreneurs create skill? I think the color of money is green. So there are a lot of funders. But when we fund companies, uh, the promise comes with an entire ecosystem leverage. So when we are helping companies, we try to bring in our tech platform, our content which is available within the organization, as well as our teams which are actually working with a lot of smaller businesses you know, coaching them in terms of what is the diagnostics, how do they move to the next phase. So we bring all of that in when we come in as a funder. And that is what kind of really gets appreciated by these entrepreneurs. For example, uh, we funded recently a healthcare training company. So it's an ed tech company, but in the healthcare space. And they train allied healthcare workers. We actually worked uh, with them to create their entire model in terms of how do they bring down their cost, what should be their scale-up plan, how do, should they go about expanding their centers, what should be the strategy. So it's not only when financial engineering we help them, but we also help them on the BD side. So we are connecting them with all the relevant people through which they can expand their network. So helping expand network connection comes very naturally within the foundation because apart from the key leaders who are here, there is a whole bunch of advisors that we have within the system that we offer to our portfolio companies saying that if this is what you require, yes, let's you know uh, dive into our pool, look at it and see who is the relevant person uh, from there. Also, this particular company, we are helping them with fundraising. So, you know, how do they build out their business model? What should be the pitch? Introducing them to relevant investors is something that we are in the process of doing. That's one one company that we've helped. uh, The other one was in uh, remote healthcare. They were a remote ICO monitoring company. And there, uh, you know, we we kind of helped them with an interesting model where we brought on to their uh, board an advisor or a consultant who was an ex-CEO of uh, one of the leading hospital chains. And he was actually working in consolidating tier two, tier three hospitals in, uh, you know, in and around few locations. And that was exactly the target of our portfolio company. So it kind of, you know, the pieces of the puzzle mashed each other in terms of uh, him coming on board and helping them with building out their footprint. Great, Ratna. So, you know, you've spoken about how one the question on helping entrepreneurs create scale is it's pretty much as me asking you this next question which is how do you create value for the companies where they because scale gets value so let's you know let's go into the topic a little bit deeper probably with some more case studies about how you create value for the companies where you invest absolutely i think when we're speaking of value value gets created even from sales so you're absolutely right that when you help them scale value gets created But one example, which was very, very unique for us, because the value for that entrepreneur came from social impact. So he is actually an English learning app company, and they have built an app where they empower people to get jobs by teaching them English. But what he wanted to do is during this corona time, he actually wanted to increase the value that his company can give by training people on how to deal with corona, especially in the blue collar segment. So we actually tied up with them and we created an app 
that was helping blue collar gray collar workers spread awareness about uh, you know the current pandemic how they should take precautions how when they go back to their work workplaces what they should do etc so you know specifically content was created for different job roles and uh, you know as a part of the vadwani foundation we have a skilling team the skilling team creates a lot of content which are job role focused so we in fact help them leverage that content which was already created by us and put it on the app we help them market that app take it to places in terms of being able to increase the number of people who can access it so that was one you know example of value that comes to my mind when you say that you know how do you help uh, entrepreneurs create value okay excellent so ratna how can our listeners reach out i think you know you've got a website that's vadwani foundation and guys you can just google it out that's w a d h W A N I Vadwani Foundation, and you will get the Vadwani Catalyst Fund. Or I'm sure that our listeners might, you know, will have some questions for you, so they can reach out to the fund directly, right? Absolutely, you all can reach out to us uh, through our website, where our LinkedIn handles are also given. You can reach out directly to me on my LinkedIn handle as well, Ratna Mehta. I am on LinkedIn under the same name, so it will be a pleasure to connect. Fantastic, folks, and that's it. That's a wrap on this episode of Pesa Pesa, the investing in entrepreneur special. My guest, Ratna Mehta, executive vice president and head Vadwani Catalyst Fund. Ratna, thank you, thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you, and listeners, if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM Network. You can listen to us on the IVM Podcast app or IVM Podcast. podcast.com you can also follow us on our social media we are ivm podcast on twitter and instagram and if you want to reach out to me i am your host anupam gupta b50 on twitter and thank you so much for listening to paisa paisa brought to you by cred the most rewarding credit card bill payments no material on the show should be considered as financial advice the material on the show is for informational purposes only please consult a financial advisor before taking any investment decision 2020 is a difficult year. A global pandemic, protests, elections, recessions, you get the picture. What we need is a space where we can have nuanced discussions about global affairs and foreign policy. That's where I come in. My name is Hamsini Hariharan and I host the States of Anarchy podcast. Every second Tuesday I speak to experts in the field of international relations to make a little more sense of the world. So join me on the IVM podcast app, website or wherever you're listening to me right now. Whether you're an established sports person or a budding one or simply a sports enthusiast join us Tanvi and Shlok We are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy mindset and everything sport So tune in to the Millennial Athlete every Monday only on the IVM Podcast Network Trust us it's going to be lit <laughs>